I just wanted to show you, it is managed forest. It is not protected forest. It is managed forest. And my idea is that we should finally not need protected forest if you work carefully in your forest mm -hmm. and in very extensive forestry, which has better financial results than the others. And at, at the same time, a good ecology no? and with minimum interference. Říká Lutz Feze, autor takzvaného libeckého konceptu a někdejší vedoucí odboru lesů města Libek. Během krátké exkurze nám představil hlavní principy hospodaření v městských lesích a výsledky pozorování z referenčních oblastí, které slouží jako zdroj informací a inspirace pro hospodaření. Lesy města Libek se rozprostírají na přibližně 5000 hektarech a rozděleny jsou do čtyřech revírů. Převažují zde přirozená lesní společenstva, rostoucí na půjách bohatých na živiny. Z dřevin převládá buk, následovaný duby a ostatní listnáči. Cílem péče o lesy v majetku města Libek je zajistit života schopnost a reprodukční schopnost přirozených lesních společenstev a kvalitu dřeva stromů. Účelem není maximalizovat výnosy z lesa, ale vyvážit sociální, ekologické a ekonomické potřeby. One thing just for, for beginning, our Lübeck concept tends to harvest finally only some big trees. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the beginning, no, the, after planting or sowing or in the youth, we try to leave the nature itself mm -hmm. so that it can coordinate itself in a natural manner. And the, the best, the strongest, they will survive and the others not. And after 40, 50 years, we have a good structure normally. Mm -hmm. The single tree harvesting that we concentrate our harvest mainly, 90% is final cut. That means when the trees are big enough. For uh, oak, long-living uh, tree species, uh, it must be at least 80 centimeters in breast height diameter or more. And uh, for, for beech, it's about uh, 70 centimeters. And here you can see that, that there was a tree harvested. Okay. The crown timber must be let back to the forest because that is humus for the future. Mm -hmm. That is organic matter and so that is for dead wood. Dead wood is another aspect of our concept. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if somewhere a stem is falling down, then we leave it because we decided at least 10% of the volume must be dead wood and 10% additionally must be habitat trees. Also with specific criteria for, for animals. And it's regardless of quality. We leave it even if it's good quality. Otherwise, we, we will not fulfill this objective within the next 50 years. Po 30 letech nyní obhospodařovaný les obsahuje dohromady asi 20% mrtvého dřeva a biotopových stromů. And we do not interfere in the development. We just harvest here and there. Nothing. Not direction. No education. We say at Siong, we say always we educate the forest, uh -huh. not we, but the classical forestry. And education is always disturbance, <laughs> negative. <laughs> we do not understand the language of the nature. It is difficult to educate them because we do not, cannot speak with them and do not know what they want. We don't know. V bukodubovém porostu s jasanem a javorem Lucfeze demonstroval, jak tyto dřeviny fungují ve směsi. Dub jako světlomilná dřevina potřebuje přímé oslunění. V kompetici s bukem je nucen růst do výšky, díky čemuž se tvoří dlouhý kmen bez větví. Podle Luce Fézera si spousta lesníků myslí, že kombinace dubu s bukem není kvůli konkurenci a předrůstání dubu bukem vhodná. Důvodem podle něj možná je, že v takových porostech vidíme spoustu odumřelých dubů a nikdy buky. Jak zdůraznil, jedná se ale o přirozený jev, související s kompetiční strategií, protože duby odumírají ve velkém počtu i v čistě dubových porostech, zatímco v bukových porostech prakticky nenajdeme mrtvé buky. And we found out that the differentiation of the of a natural stand which we do not anything after 100 years you have a composition like in a well managed stand because you have about 60 to 80 dominant trees by itself by itself you have nothing on money invested and you have additionally the understory of oak which you can use at any time
this area was all spruce. Mm -hmm. It's wet, it's a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, in one wet year, a storm came and it fell down, clear, clear cut by nature. Mm -hmm. And we left it and waited some years. And I said, oh, only, only spruce. There was 100% cover with new spruce. Normal effect after, after spruce falling down. And everybody said, you must do something. You must, you will, it will be the next 100 years against only spruce. Said, no, our principle is 10 years waiting. And after three or four years, suddenly the, the birch came in. And after another three or four years, the birch overtook the complete spruce vegetation. And now you can see the spruce has no chance anymore. By itself, nothing planted, just waited. But now you have only birch and what will you do with birch? So first principle, we do not differentiate in the value of the trees uh, between the different species because we do not know in 100 years or in 200 years what they do with the timber, which species will survive. We only look at the uh, ecological situation and we want to give for the next generation stable nature, near nature systems. That means it's logical, it's a pioneer stage, and in pioneer stage you have birch, mainly. But we know from other places that after another 10 or 20 years, you will have other species in it. It will come in and after 60, 80 years, the, the birches will finish. You can even harvest them. We have a good market for birch here, to Scandinavia. And we are very, very confident that in most of the cases, the successional walk is in the right way. What I wanted to show here is a little bit the configuration of older forests with this mixture of old and younger trees and really big trees like the big oaks together with beech and aetza. You see they are high. Here is Fraxinus as well, ash tree. You see ash tree is one of our main species here. Uh, it, it, is, it belongs to the association of beaches. Mm -hmm. If you have a little bit more water or a moist mm -hmm. area, you have as a pioneer ash tree. Mm -hmm. And afterwards comes uh, Arza, maple. Mm -hmm. and, and then and the, only later comes beech as a final uh, cover. But not completely, all, always mixed somehow. Here, old oak tree, one meter diameter, maybe 250 years old, but can grow another 100 years, doesn't matter. The timber is okay, even in 100 years. Underneath some regeneration, here and there. A little bit too much here, because in former times it was more open. We now leave it to grow, to grow denser. What we think in future is, that the oak shall grow until this even more. The forest has said that it's a normal young oak. You see that, that, that oak, maybe it is uh, 300 years old. I don't know, 280, 300 years old. One third of its final age. And we have cut them, foresters have cut all the mighty old trees. Uh -huh. And they shall be in a Dauerwald, in a permanent forest, Part of the forest must consist out of those very big old trees which are allowed even to die after a thousand years. No? 10 to 20 percent must be set aside to, to live all the time they can live. Yeah, that is our, our reference. Oaks are like this. So now we enter a, one of these six reference areas which we have. These reference areas should be representative to, to the normal situation of our forest. And uh, we look at these places, how they develop, and try to understand out of this um, how nature works with our former managed forests. Na jedné z referenčních ploch se nachází smrkový asi 70 let starý porost, který byl po většinu doby ponechán samovolnému vývoji. 
You see, it's very dense. What you see as well with is that we have rodeos who have uh, eaten the bark in winter, nearly all of them. So they are rotten inside at that height, all of them. But uh, they are now standing around since about 35 years and we, we expected it would break down immediately, but doesn't. Only a little bit from the west now it starts, but it's still rather stable. There's no bark beetle, more or less. Normally everybody would say, oh, they will, they will die immediately. They don't die. Don't die. <laughs> Our pure spruce stands in the reference areas, we have only half of the damages than in our managed spruce. Because it's more open, dry, warm, here it's close. But what is good is, you see the dead wood is lying here. And in the long run, the animals don't enter. The dead wood will make humus. It will be more humid. And uh, in 50 years, you have something else here. This forest was replanted. It was field until 180 years before. And then it was replanted with oak trees. But these oak trees were in the 50s of last century. Many of them were harvested as an old oak stem by the Soviet troops. They cut out uh, uh, the, the best oak trees. And, and then the beech trees, which came naturally in mm -hmm. by nature, overtook it. Now there are still some oaks but the best oaks have been cut out already. And from now, from then on, nothing had happened and everything else came by itself. For example, a wonderful hornbean. Mm -hmm. Normally you don't have these uh, Car Carpinus betulus. These, uh, they're normally only half height, but look how tall it is and how straight it is. And a very uh, shade tolerant uh, species, very good uh, timber. And you have a, uh, cherry tree brought by birds and and beech is overtaking because they had reduced the oak and now the beech in different ages that came naturally build up the main crown. We have plenty of regeneration every year but we have too many deer here and we have we have only 50 hectares you need at least 75 hectares, only then you can hunt by yourself. Now it's part of a community and they are not interested in ecology and forests, they're just in endless trophies. If this whole forest would have the constitution like this here, these beaches around us, then it would be even about 900 cubic meter per hectare. It is very dense. You will not find in a managed forest this density like here. You see the crowns are touching each other. They are apart five, four, five, six meters only and not 10 or 20. See, it's, it's dense and you see there is no problem in the crowns with climate change. Nothing to be seen. They grow. They like it. And even now, when we have this climate change, we think we shall keep the stands dark, keep them dark and cool and moist and don't touch them the next 20, 30 years or so, because we, we first need the change in, in the climate, then we can continue. Naturally, some get dry, no? Naturally, they get dry, it doesn't matter. These observations led us to the conclusion in the managed forest not to touch very much the managed oak stands. Let even the managed oak stands grow first because their self-differentiation is so excellent mm -hmm. that maybe when, when it's clear who are the, the main trees, when they remain in the end with 80, maybe 90 per hectare, then it doesn't matter whether this one is dying or not dying. You have such a high volume and such a high value in the end without any input. You can't conquer with management. And you, you even see that in, in Germany you have a hard reaction of the trees on the climate change. There's drought and wind and bark beetles and so. 
and you don't see very severe damages in our forest here. You do, don't see hardly a, a tree which is dried out. Some bark beetles, yes, but beech, for example, is not really affected as far as long as you have a dark in your forest, dense. The nature will seek for the best structure. Maybe under climate change, maybe, that we lose many of the old trees because they're not adapted. No? And then it must renew in a way we do not know. But we will not lose the forest. We will lose a specific structure, maybe. Maybe. Don't know. But we must give the chance to nature to find it by themselves.